Can you see my screen? Yep. Okay. Uh, okay, so based on last uh, meeting's uh, review, uh, we're saying we want to have a, a mandatory section with a small number of questions so people can go over them quickly. Um, so right now there are uh, 12. Uh, so I say it's uh, maybe 12 minutes, but I'm actually not sure if it takes more because people may need to think. Um, so, so so here are the questions um, and how do you classify your experience with cloud native storage and the fourth question um, rank the attributes of the storage systems based on how important they are uh, so here are the attributes that we uh, discussed about in the white paper um, so uh, so basically just as I'm assuming when they are ranking this they may need to think a lot so I don't know if one minute is enough for that but um, at least uh, they can rank they don't have to type a lot unless if they have to specify some other attribute uh, Alex has a comment here he said uh, Okay, we want to add deployment options on-prem or cloud. Um, so I guess we can add that. Um, so the only thing is, I, I think if, uh, if they uh, answer what type of storage they're using, then maybe we will know already how they're deployed, but we can, I think we can add that question, I guess. Anybody has any comment on this one? Okay, so okay to add this deploying option whether on-prem or cloud. Where where was the proposal to add to to which question? Oh, I, I'm sure you see my screen. I see it. Okay, so Alex says he was saying that we want to add a deployment options on-prem or cloud to cover. So this is in the uh, uh, this this is in the white paper basically talking about, uh, about this one, basically here we're talking about um, you deploy your um, storage either as a hardware solution, your data center, this is usually the, yeah. uh, like the enterprise I, I storage. I, what, what, I, what I didn't understand was is, is deployment option an attribute uh, doesn't, doesn't seem like it fits yeah. as an attribute. No, I think it's going to be, I, I would think that would be a separate question. I don't know why sh he highlighted number four. Yeah, I, I would, think. Yeah, it's a separate question. Does it make sense to add a separate question? Say whether you, whether it's deploying on-prem or cloud? Or... So I think it's interesting knowledge to know, but I'm not sure that it makes a difference to to the technical need, right? Uh huh. If okay. No if we know what attributes they're looking for and what types of storage they're wanting to connect to, where it is, whether it's in a public or private cloud, I'm not sure how, how much difference that would make. We probably, yeah, we probably will tell already if, uh, because there is a question uh, below, basically ask you to, to tell us what storage system you're using specifically. So from that, we probably can tell. So maybe this is already covered. Okay, so I would just add some comments here saying that. Yeah, I think, I think if we were to, to ask the question, it would certainly be uh, its own question, I would, I would say, suggest. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, okay. So I would just ask him if it's okay. It's, maybe it's already uh, covered anyway. Okay, so, all right. Um, and then uh, number five, basically just rank those uh, attributes, it's the same. It's the same attributes, just rank them. Uh, what are the pain, the pain points when you're using container storage or the pain points you have rank, what it, you know, the most, the biggest problem that you have. Okay, so any comments, uh, number and, four and, and five? Yeah, so if, if we get them to rank the pain points, which I think is a, a great idea, does it also answer question number four? 
Uh, I think the, the number four is what is the most important. So basically, you you first say, okay, uh, when you make decisions on choosing which sort of system to use, what are okay. the most important attributes, right? So you you look okay. at those. This is a little bit yeah. different there. Is yeah, what yeah. We, what yeah. would they have choice on? Okay. Right. The second one is really when you are using them, then what are the problems you're facing? This yeah, it's a slightly different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then, um, the number uh, six basically just if you are using block storage, tell us what is the system that you are using. So if they uh, give us a name, then we'll probably have a good idea, right? It's AWS, Google Cloud. We know that's deployment is on cloud, not on prem. Um, and then uh, for, for if you're using okay, if you're using shared file systems, specify uh, what what systems you're using. It's the same. And then we have the same same question for object store. Uh, just tell us which one you're using. Key value store. So we give uh, several choices here. Uh, and then if it's a database, what is the database you're using? So I think there's some overlapping between uh, number nine and number 10, number 10 key value, but uh, some of those like Cassandra, yeah, Cockroach, those are also databases, so, but uh, I think they can also do key value. Uh, so, so that's why they are kind of in both places. So if it's not already in key, uh, number nine, then you know, specify that in number 10, so. Yeah, I, that. I think that's appropriate, yeah. Okay. Um, and, and then, um, then next one is the, con the orchestration, uh, container orchestration systems, what are you using? Uh, and then after you specify that one, what type of, so this one could be also be multi-select, I guess, multi-select. Most of those are more slept. And what type of workloads you are currently running on containers or what are you planning to run in the next studio six months? So we gave a few examples so then you can um, list whatever they are running. I, th I think based on your examples, you're asking for stateful workloads. So maybe you ought to mm -hmm. put that yeah. there. Otherwise you could get okay. any. Oh, okay. So, so like this? Yeah. Okay, so that kind of, yeah, sure. Right, otherwise maybe we'll be all over the place. <laughs> okay, so uh, here are the mandatory questions. Uh, and then we go to the optional ones. Uh, so this is the, how is your storage solution deployed? So okay, so do we need to combine this with the, with this uh, comments from Alex, Alex saying on-prem or cloud, or do we still keep this? This one basically saying, okay, you deploy that as hardware solution or software components on commodity servers, or yeah, this one still has a little bit more detail, I think, uh, public cloud or cloud storage as a service. That is, uh, you have uh, some, like Cassandra as a service, but you offer that on a public cloud, so that's a little different. So, so I think this one still has a little bit more detail compared to uh, the the one that uh, Alex mentioned. That's on-prem or cloud. That's kind of more general, right? So I think. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure if uh, I'm not sure if it helps us to know the difference, but um, one difference might be uh, in your local data center, right? A data center you're managing. Okay. Or in a data center where you are co-located. Okay. We, so, we it's a, so it's a public. Okay. So it's a, so it's an on-prem or cloud then. We'll have to add that. We can add then the separate question there. Well, no, no, no. I, I'm, I'm sorry. If, if you see the first option here, how is your storage solution deployed? Mm -hmm. Deployed hardware storage solution in a data center. Oh, uh, what type? Is it private or yeah, a public? You might have one option being uh, in a local data center, mm -hmm. uh, and the next option might say deployed as a hardware storage solution in a co-located remote data center. Co-located data center. Right. So, so co-located data center. What is it? It's like 
is it between public and, and uh, private or what is called? Yeah, so I would How is that different from public? That's, that's not public cloud. I would not okay. consider co-location at public cloud. You could, okay. You could lease the, the space in the data center. Those, those machines are your machines and managed by you. It's not a public okay. cloud. Okay. Uh, I think if they also answered another question about whether they were on-prem or in cloud or colo, we could probably deduce this. Yeah, if there's a colo option somewhere else, I think that those three are the are the three that we'd like to know as far as the comment made further up in the form as to how are they deploying, right? Mm -hmm. Th those would be, I think, the the deployment options that I would consider uh, of interest. Okay. Uh, yeah. So the we... only thing is, I, at this point, hitting question 13, I think we have to maybe go back and decide which of these to call because mm -hmm. I'm of the opinion that to get participation, you want this to go out with a promise that, would you please take this 10 minute survey? Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 10 minutes, you're going to start to get a lot of people who are never going to even open it. Right, right. So those are quite optional, right? So right now we are in optional yeah. questions. So we can perhaps some a little bit more freedom to do here. Yeah, well, I so, think Stephen's point is we don't want to ask the same question in a variety of different ways throughout. Oh, okay. The survey, right? Yeah, so, exactly. Okay. So um, I, I don't think we have explicitly. Um, and we may want to just kind of peruse, I'll have to open the document in another page okay. here. And, and so, we can just look through it to see if, if we are asking the same thing in two different we ways. Did, we did, yeah, so basically, can we just look at those two questions? Because we, we didn't really ask the deployment questions before, other than we just asked them uh, what storage systems they're using, then that we can probably tell from that as well. So. Right, if they say, okay, they're using AWS EBS, then we know, right? Uh, so uh, is this question redundant to, to what we already asked? I'm not sure. Um, well, I think this is the explicit deployment question that okay. the comment before addressed. Yeah, even if it isn't that way now, maybe we could reword both these questions to eliminate the overlap somehow. Okay, so these two questions, should we just combine them as just as, as one because there was some overlapping between those two? Make it simpler uh, or? I don't know. I, I think it really, the, the form of your storage is orthogonal to where you're located myself. In other words, if you define, mm -hmm. if you use an outside vendor provided storage as a service, that's one category. Mm -hmm. uh, a dedicated appliance form is a second and software defined storage is a third. And they exist regardless of where you're hosted, on-prem or in a cloud. Mm -hmm. So I think two questions is warranted, but maybe not every permutation of those, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. Stephen, I, I agree with you um, in terms of the technical, you know, what would make a difference to us in looking at, at how these storage solutions would work. But I think the deployment, whether it's cloud, or local or or colo um, gives us insight as to you know the the closeness of the data right the expectation in terms of performance uh, would be something that I would have an interest in yeah and by the way I also do like the question of going up a tier from block storage where that that what is it the fourth question down on 13 getting into asking about as a service forms of things like Cassandra key value stores whatever as yeah. opposed to just getting block store and turning it into these services yourself yeah we're definitely oh, okay. starting to see more one. of that this one okay uh, okay so so for for this question, Stephen, do you think we could um, do you think we could answer get the answer we want out of this just one Q13, and then maybe slide an option in here um, 
for for co-location yeah to to be honest my speculation is we can ask the you know we can ask the on-prem public cloud colo but i've sort of talked to enough people that it I've come to the conclusion that with big enterprises, they're checking every one of those boxes right now. And I, I personally don't think I, I'm curious enough to know because I think I've already come to the conclusion, but we could put it there to confirm it. Oh, you're saying they, they're probably using everything anyway. Yeah. That, oh, okay. You know, okay. I, I run into a fairly decent sample mm -hmm. of people okay. just getting around to conferences and whatever. And yeah, my observation is Right now, today, the big enterprises are going to be checking all those boxes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe, you know, maybe their roadmap is something different, but right now they're pretty much everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't feel I needed to ask, but if somebody else here wants to, mm -hmm. uh, I have no objection to it. Okay. So we just we should keep that one there then. Um. Well, for the sake of brevity, I'm the main uh, problem. I'm having the okay same with that. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, so I think you know, based on who this survey is going to, we're going to get different results, even from the people in the same company. Like if you're on the off side of the house, you would probably know all these nitty gritty details about the infrastructure. Whereas, um, you know, whether it's colo or not, whether it's what type of block storage. Whereas if the survey goes mostly to the developers, they probably would click object storage stuff or more cloud stuff. So I think one of the things we need to ask right at the beginning is what your role is. And, well, well it's, it's for uh, users. We're, we actually talked about, that, uh, so we talked about this last time. I think Quinton want to kind of uh, make this very clear in the beginning that this is only for the end users. So. Yeah, if you are you are a developer, then it's your role well, is you are using. Uh, yeah, it's only end users. We're not talking about the vendors or uh, developers even, but developers can be a user of a storage as well. So if well, they, I don't know who the service is going I'm out sorry? to. Look, if it's like a this is targeting survey end from user CNCF, group. anyone can click on it. Yeah, they could, but I'm just saying, but we are saying this is targeting well, the, the end user. So, so uh, if they, if and the user don't know the details, then they can answer don't know, right? So, yeah. Um, the yeah. other thing, though, I think Ardalan user is a very big term. Developers getting this. The objection <laughs> yeah. of Kubernetes is to abstract out storage, and I I could see that in some organizations, a developer honestly wouldn't know uh, what was behind the Kubernetes right. interface. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so 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 that's fine, yeah, so right? So then that just I, answer don't know right? as a. You don't have to be an ops person to deploy Rook or to deploy Ceph, you know? You, whereas a lot of other storage systems, you know, you have to be an ops person, you have to be a storage admin, an IT admin. So based on who gets this survey, we get, we'll get different results. And I think one of the things we need to use as a, uh, like a filtering level is what your role is. Um, because I, I think we, end user is a very big thing. Yeah, we, no, last time we have already got rid of that question. In the beginning of the survey, we do have a, in, initially the first version of the survey does have a, like the categories, you, who you are. But, but then that's last time we, um, so basically you're using, right? So we, we changed this one last time. We got rid of the first question. So this is yeah, not- Yeah, but I, end I think everyone might be right that mm -hmm. you can be using it and then fall into a category of developer or ops. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, that's true. Right, it's true. Yeah. So, so basically, this question basically is some people may not be able to answer it. Then that's fine, right? They can just say don't know. We do have this one here, right? We we can't we can say if you're a developer, don't answer. Don't cannot say that. <laughs> that would be bad. <laughs> but this is uh, more targeting the end user. <laughs> so. Um, so I think for question thirteen. Well, the thing is with. Storage, the boundary between developer and mm -hmm. end user uh, definition is really vague and yeah yeah it opaque. is yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean yeah I, I think I think, uh, I think I, sorry. at least the last time what Quinn was saying is kind of limiting this to people who are re really really the end user not the admin or people like that so <laughs> but it's hard you can't say okay if you're admin you can't fill in this out or something right so well the thing is at all the questions we're asking as far as consistency availability 
these are the stuff that an average user, erasure coding, these are the stuff that an average user wouldn't know about. This is the stuff that usually admins do due diligence on and they mm -hmm. figure out all the details. Yeah, um, that, so. that, that's, yeah, that makes sense too. Yeah, it's kind of a, uh, but I would have, I would have said most of the, for some of these surveys that I've seen in the past that we've uh, here uh, in our organization had success with is we would ask the demographic questions, those questions that would kind of identify who, who's taking the, the uh, survey uh, at the very end and make them optional. And that way it would at least uh, give us the opportunity to gain that extra insight as to who was uh, taking the survey so it, okay it so maybe work. okay so I can maybe I'll add that back at the end we did have that that kind of casual mode <laughs> for earlier version so maybe I will yeah. so maybe I will maybe just to add. have like one or two questions yeah. at the end what is your says, role? hey we'd like to know more about who yeah. you are and what your yeah. role is. okay so then we can finally when we get this we can really uh, analyze that but we're not going to add that to the to the mandatory section. This, there are already too many questions. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. Fine. Okay. All right. But so, so I'll add this one. Question, to go back to question thirteen. Okay. Uh, the feedback that I provided about colo mm. and, and yeah. data. Uh, uh, Stephen has convinced me that uh, I think that uh, this is kind of redundant. Not enough value there to ask another question for it. So I think you can just delete that and and just leave question thirteen as it is. Okay. So, okay. All right, so um, I'm sorry. I, I think I was get distracted. Should we remove this one? Yes, did okay. my audio end? Is my audio working? Yeah, yeah, I was sorry. I was distracted. I was reading something else and then <laughs> okay. I, I just want to make sure I got, yeah, okay. Yeah. I think it's yeah. okay to okay. So just leave 13 as is. And, and Stephen's right, we can, we can infer from the answers to 13 mm -hmm. whether locality is, uh, is an issue to them or not. Okay, all right. Okay, so keep that and then, yeah, so we still uh, have this question. This is also kind of more advanced question. Uh, data, how is data protected through redundancy in the student system? Mm -hmm. <laughs> A lot of users will know those details, um, but they can say, I don't know. Those are pretty detailed questions. Yeah, we could probably tell by the answer to that question. If they, if they answer it, they're probably ops. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This the next one's you know saying what data services are provided. Um, yeah, this one is probably a little bit better than number fourteen. Yeah. So and the sixteen, uh, does your storage system require installation of a kernel mode? I think this module. This is a uh, sad. Uh, bring this up last time. He said uh, he he said he got this the question a lot. So. So I have this one in this uh, uh, optional question. Uh, could, could you read it to me? My, uh, oh, oh yeah. yeah so question, question 16 says, does your storage system require installation of a kernel module? So this uh, one was brought up by Saad. Yeah, I, no, yeah that's I, a good I, point. Yeah. yeah. OK. I, I, many, yeah, it's only an ops person would know the answer to that. But for mm -hmm. those taking the survey, if they do answer that, that'll be uh, good to know. Okay. No. But then, you probably want to leave an option. Don't know. <laughs> don't know. Oh, 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 don't know. Don't, don't, know, know, don't, don't care. Know. Don't, don't know. Okay, don't know. <laughs> just FYI, um, yeah. I was just at a conference uh, the past four days ending in Sunday and oh, saw okay. the talk on um, CSI. Oh, okay. To a big room and he asked this question. Oh, the, cur um, the kernel thing? Yeah. Oh, and so what do people say? Essentially, if you're on software-defined storage running in containers, it seems that the answer was uniformly yes, that mm. I don't think anybody heard of one that didn't need a kernel module. Oh, okay, okay. So it's probably, okay, so it's probably more, um, uh, more common. It really would yeah. be a question, if you really wanted coverage of the whole world, you could ask it to vendors of software defined storage, right? I mean, they'd know. Mm -hmm. And the users are in a position where they're not authoritative and they sort of maybe don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Or might even give wrong answers because they're confused. Yeah. 
other than. So I don't know. If the question had to go, I would actually drop this, but maybe we should give Saad an opportunity to defend it or see if he still wants Yeah, it. I think he just dropped off. Uh, uh, the, he Last time he said this one is important, so I would just leave it there. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think that the right audience to ask this is actually vendors. Mm, yeah, myself. I think that. Yeah, I think several of those questions are all like that, you know, like the question 14, you know, 15, maybe more user probably know, but 14, I think it's pretty, only vendor knows, but the, the erasure coding as a user wouldn't be looking at that. Yeah, so all leave them. I think those, some of those are from the, from the white paper. Yeah, and then 17, it seems to me that if you're using an orchestrator, this has yeah. to be yes. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but some people, they, they still, they may not really know. Uh, I don't know if, if they, well, if they just use database, then they may not, then they don't use, use this, right? So if they use uh, like uh, I suppose, yeah, if you're using yeah. it as a service or mm -hmm. maybe you're, you haven't even moved stateful apps of any kind to containers, in which mm -hmm. case you don't use storage at all. Right, but database is also considered a storage, right? So they're just in like Vitus, right? So then yeah. in that case, they actually don't use a plugin. So this plugin is more, yeah, using the block storage or something. Okay, well, I understand 16 or 17, but if mm -hmm. we get to a point of triage where we're, we've decided we're going to purge questions, mm -hmm. I put 16 and 17 on the cut list myself. Okay. Oh, well, I want to keep... Uh, number 17, <laughs> what <are you> Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, okay, uh, and then, of, yeah, this is a little bit more basically then we just want to know what type of uh, volume, type, volume plugin you're using. Uh, okay, so maybe I should read the question because I think, uh, is that, is that uh, Jeff? Was, he said he couldn't read it. So uh, number 17 is, are you using a volume plugin to provision storage of containers? If the answer is yes, then what type of volume plugin are you using? You know, Kubernetes intro plugin, Docker volume driver, interface plugin, Flex volume, CSI. Yeah, so this would be a question that I'm interested in, so I would like to keep this as optional at least. Um, and, oh, I jumped to the number. And the next question uh, is uh, what protocol is the block storage system you're using if that is, a, uh, you know, applicable, you know? I SCSI double channel RBD. Um, and uh, 20, question 20 is- You know, if you're gonna yeah. list those protocols. Um, I think that was another thing that came out during this conference I was at scale. Yeah. But NVMe over Fabric was brought up spontaneously by a number mm -hmm. of people. Yeah, yeah, we can uh, add that. As a future, not something they're using now, I suppose. Okay. So mm -hmm. I guess if it's correct to leave it out probably if it's what you are using, but you oh okay you it just looks uh, like that's going okay. to become big. Okay, uh, MV, NVMe UF or just NVMe UF or do you want to be? Let me see how that's typically valued. Because this is uh, the NVMe UF is the one that we are actually um, in the plugin that I'm working with. We're actually kind of adding that. So, um, yeah, I is it normally NVMe hyphen um, oh, yeah, for at least that's how I recollect seeing it. Okay. I'm doing a web search now to see if I can. Yeah, so this is well, so this is a particular one that we are adding. This is a particular protocol we are adding in our plugins. I know this one, but I think there are a uh, slightly different way of saying the plugin. It's a little different. So I, yeah, I'm not expert in this myself, <laughs> but I, I sometimes people just say NVMe. Oh, anyway, you know what? Just, let me, I, I would say add it to the list. Okay, so let me uh, actually, you know what? I, we actually have this one, maybe in the white paper. Just do, do a quick search to see how, how we, uh, NVM. Yeah, we actually added this one here. So let's just uh, use the term here. People will know, okay. So I think uh, here we just use the NVMe. I think that's- Well, you're using that's a, that's it a as a form of storage there as opposed to a connection <laughs> type, right? Uh, no, this is uh, this is basically the well. So, NVMe UF would be a protocol. NVMe. So this is a transport uh, used for the so used 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 for the storage, right? So you can use that with SSD. 
I think uh, NVMe is probably good. I, I, will, I will search it a bit more. But the, the, I think but NVMe the, OF it makes sense, and mm -hmm. I don't think it makes a difference whether we hyphen it or not. I've seen it hyphen too. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I think that, yeah, the, the way I'm writing this is correct. I'm just saying, I don't know if, uh, do we, I think there's an, maybe an older form, just uh, NV and uh, slide. But yeah, anyway, this, this, this refers to connecting to it in a remote box over mm -hmm. Ethernet for the okay. most part, even though that technically there are ways to do this over fiber channel and other mm -hmm. transport. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think it's probably okay. I just add this one. If people want to write something different, they can say, you know, you can say other or something. If they say, think this one is more too specific, but this is definitely a, a protocol that, uh, uh, that is okay. I just don't know if it was an, a broader way of uh, stating it so that includes this one and there's another, another one. So I'll, I'll, keep, I'll just leave this one here. But if you guys think we should write yeah. it a different way, then, you know. I'm in favor I'll, of yeah. putting it on the list. Okay. All right. Okay, so the next one is the, the file, the uh, shared file systems. And then this one, uh, just in NFS, SIFS. And, and then that, that, that's almost it. And the, are there anything else you want us to know? So that's basically a, a very general question. If they want to just to put on any more thoughts they have. And so that's, so, so a little bit over 20 questions in total. Probably 22 questions, or well, maybe 21, 22 questions in total. Yeah, but if they just want to do the, the first 12, then then maybe they can get it done in 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for 21, uh, I think that's a good opportunity to uh, have people mention any other technical challenges they're facing as well. May want to mm -hmm. may want to suggest that. Are there any other? Anything else you'd like us to know or any any technical challenges you'd like to share? Mm -hmm. um, maybe try and elicit a response from from folks who are having technical challenges. Because mm -hmm. that's kind of what we're looking to address is what are yeah. the technical challenges, right? Yeah, so if they couldn't uh, get it uh, covered in the, we have this that ranking question and they can elaborate here. Is that one? Yeah, yeah that one is just like a, you, you kind of rank it. But this here, you can write down whatever you want, if you like to write. Yeah, yeah so, and then the last one, I just, I need, to, I need to, I think there's a more categories that I have in the first version of this and I will go back and check. There's a uh, categories of the rows, so I'll add back here. Yeah, uh, we'll have to we'll have to figure out what's the what's the right grouping there because. Um, let me see. Can if I go everybody back? just puts in user, I, I still would be at a loss as to <laughs> what their role. <laughs> is, right? uh, so so they can be yeah. So this is we will make this a multi select because people can probably in multiple categories, right? Okay. So, yeah, they can be a uh, and you. Yeah, and there is a. I need to. I see. Let me save this first, just to make sure that I'm not. Uh, um, yeah, I just want to make sure that I don't screw this up. So I want to go back to the history, and there's a earlier version that actually has some categories. How do I go to earlier version? Uh, uh, do you guys know <laughs> how, how do I go? Oh, change every change. Okay, let's see. Last edit. Maybe this. Oh, okay. This will tell me because there's an earlier version that I know have a. It's probably one a little earlier. Okay, this one probably have. Yeah. Okay, so I just uh, let's copy this and then go back. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's useful. I need yeah. to do that more often. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so now hopefully I'm in the, yeah, so now I'm in the latest, I think. Let's double check. Yeah, so that's uh, Alex. All right. Um, so, let's see. All right, cool. <laughs> so we have, <laughs> so what is your role, basically? Um, you're a contributor, a vendor, distributor, cloud provider, cluster operator, cloud native storage user. 
Yeah. So your app developer, deployer, yeah, something like that. So maybe we should, okay, move this one to the top, right? Since this is uh, targeting the user, so we just uh, make this the first choice, highlighting that, but then they can, you know, they can select other, other choices. Are the old one looks a little funny compared to the others too. Which one, I'm sorry? Oh, the, the, the fact that cloud native storage user is uh, in bold face. Oh, <laughs> I just didn't want to highlight that one. So that's the, our, our target group. Oh, so yeah, I'll just uh, to highlight that. So if you would just see that one, then saying that we are focusing on the user. And so I see CNCF project cluster operator. I don't know if somebody would self-select as a project cluster operator if they were just a a user that uh, you know were sysadmin managing their own cluster. Right. So probably so some people probably would select both. So the user, I think it's more like an end user, and then okay. this one maybe. Why, why can't that just say cluster operator? I, yeah. I'm not sure why. Which one? Which one here? That, yeah. Yeah. Project cluster operator. That's oh, oh, just that, oh, oh. That, that can, oh. Like CNCF. That confusing it. to me. Yeah. You, you, mean, of, you mean get rid of CNCF? Is that what you saying? Yes. Okay. Because I don't even know what that means if you put the oh. CNCF in front of it. Oh, I think part of just means that we are okay. Just Kubernetes or those projects it doesn't mean any. Yeah, but we already asked whether we already opened it up to using Mesos or Cloud mm, Foundry. That's true. Yeah. So I think it should just say cluster and. Okay. So what about, uh, we have, okay. So what about the others? So, yeah. So this one would be like a, a distro, right? So, uh, you know, it could be maybe open shift or if you are building that yeah, or that, something. That sounds yeah. like, you know, that current CNCF, um, I chart of the, what is it? The landscape mm. now has 600 plus projects. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, uh, yeah, too much. It <laughs> don't know what I mean. Yeah. If somebody is affiliated with one of those projects or um, uh, I think so this so those categories originally come from uh, some survey uh, the I think the the maintenance team or the what a stable maintenance team there's a, some team they they have some survey uh, so this is from originally you know, the template from Quinton so this is the first question so some of those uh, uh, rows are from that um, so maybe that's why in a small targeting on CNC project. Yeah, I sort of am, mm -hmm. if I were answering this, I wouldn't know what it meant. And okay. if I were trying to so, interpret results, I wouldn't know what it meant. So maybe I- so Should I want to remove this? I can remove this one, yeah. I I, so. Okay, distribute it because I'm, yeah, I don't really, <laughs> I just saw that one, so I said, okay, I'll just have that. Uh, so the rest of them should be straightforward, I guess. User, should I add- yeah, I end? think the others are fine. I would say end user, I would say end user. End user. Uh, yeah, either then, way. Yeah, and then developer, contributor, uh, you know, vendor, cloud yeah. provider, yeah, and uh, right. cloud stopper. Okay, so maybe that's better. Yes, and that one is a little bit, bit weird too, the distributor thing. <laughs> maybe because they're more, that group is more focusing on, you know, what is the stable maintenance release or something. Maybe that's, you know, they, they are more, uh, they want to know who are the distributor, right? Because they, they would be uh, care more about the the maintenance uh, release or something. I don't know. Okay, so okay, so does this look good now? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. So um, uh, okay. So I will just update this uh, based on what what we have discussed. Um, anything else? Yeah. Not for me. Okay. Uh, anyone else? No, I'm excited to, to see some responses. <laughs> okay, so probably I will need to, uh, I just need, need to put them in a survey. I, I will ask, I will check with Alex and Quinn and see if they, uh, what they want to do before I uh, move this to a survey monkey. I don't know if, uh, I think we're supposed to uh, uh, to talk to the end user group as well and see. 
but I don't know if they want to just look at this at this way or do they want to see it directly in the survey. So I'll check with them. Um, but at least now, I think uh, I think this is in uh, a, a good shape now, a better shape than in the beginning. <laughs> hopefully, they can. They hopefully there are more people who want to uh, fill out the survey. <laughs> yeah, get yeah. some results out of this. <laughs> and how are we distributing? Oh, so it's going to be uh, converted this to a survey monkey. Okay. Yeah. And, so and what list are we sending it to? Or it's going to be the end user. So I okay. need to find that find that off on Alex. And there is a there is a Cheryl is running that group, so we need to work with her on how to distribute this. I think maybe, I don't know if yeah, it's, it's just mailing list or what. I don't know. Yeah, and is this uh, uh, something that we could then? share with our colleagues that we know yeah. are, are managing clusters or end users of clusters? Uh, yeah, of course. Yes, I think so. Yeah. I think yeah, you I think that would yeah. be helpful if yeah, that, that would be great. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think typically for some of their other surveys, they'll use an attendee list from conferences and things like that. that the CNC oh, But I think we, but I think and we want to do this on, the put it on, on tweets and things too. Yeah, yeah. I think that we, yeah, yeah that could be a good. Actually, yeah. I see that when you register for the conference, they actually ask you certain questions. It's already kind of a survey, filling out the survey. <laughs> but uh, but I think that would be a little too late for us, because right because we need to uh, get the survey out before the conference because we want to actually be want to be talking about some of the survey results at the conference. So um, we actually want to do this one before that. So uh, we'll see what the Cheryl says. She's running that group. So uh, probably we'll need to send this to their, they have probably have a mailing list to send it out and then, and then ask them to fill out, I think. So. Okay. Yeah, in any, in any case, I think once this one is finalized, this will be shared on the on our mailing list as well, right? The storage one Google mailing list as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Uh, if we don't have other things to discuss, uh, we have uh, 12 minutes back. <laughs> Right. Well, thank you very much for your work on this. It's been several weeks you've been working on this, so uh, definitely we appreciate it. Hey, thank you for your feedback. Yeah, thanks. Uh, all right. Bye. Talk to you later. Yeah, bye. Bye-bye.